continue with our class um, kosher, uh, kosher Kitchen. Mm -hmm. And we start with Sefer Hafiz Chaim. And today's topic is um, <clears throat> Toilet Seven Conditions. So, um, seven conditions under which we are uh, um, allowed to speak Roshan uh, Chara, right? Some negative speech. And um, condition number five is accurate, to be accurate. Okay. So the last condition, just to remind us, was uh, the first uh, before speaking to, uh, before the disclosing this negative information, we tried to approach that person and we said, if he's going to listen to us, or if there is a chance that he's going to listen to us, so that's uh, the route we must go. So now the five is uh, be accurate. While the regulatory information may be related for constructive purpose, slander cannot be justified. So, right, facts is one thing, and slander, which uh, the, this perpetrator did not do, we are not never allowed to, to, to say, right? Uh, one, does not, one does not have the, the right to exaggerate or alter facts <clears throat> for a constructive purpose, nor may he want to make details that minimize the severity of the person's action. So it's very, very important, very critical information, right? So one cannot exaggerate. So if he did it uh, only this, don't say he did uh, everything else, okay? Um, right? Or if if it's something uh, like uh, uh, some detail would be into uh, to his merit, so you have to mention, you, you cannot uh, withdraw the information. In discriminate use of um, super, uh, super relatives such as very, Right, so the word very can easily de distort the fact, the fact, um, the facts way out of pro proportion. Right, so you say he's very lazy. Maybe he's lazy. You you know like only a few times that uh, that that that, that he the person was lazy. Why you say very lazy? Right, this is in fact the most common form of slander that people uh, engage in. Right, so meaning that that like exaggerate, albeit unwittingly. Conversely, one must submit uh, um, conversely, one must submit authentic details that make the story sound uh, even worse than if the result can be uh, attained without uh, being uh, they being mentioned. So, if you if enough only two examples, just half of the story, and the person would get the point. So, don't uh, you're not allowed uh, to say uh, a thing more. Okay, so we stop here. Don't exaggerate. Okay, so we continue with our very interesting topic. Uh, it's chapter five, and um, <clears throat> so it's uh, meat, uh, meat and dairy combinations, right? And precautionary prohibitions. And we're going to start with a practical summary. We, we left it uh, at uh, this time, so we can review what we did in this uh, the whole section. So practical summary: one may not place meat upon the table at which one is eating daily, or, or the reverse, unless the meat is not within the, his hand reach. Okay, so, for example, uh, right, the woman is serving for, uh, for kids, and the husband is also going to eat, so kids are going to eat uh, some daily, right, and she's going to also eat, let's say, with her husband, right, so she cannot put uh, this daily, like, ne next to him, right, uh, right, if she's going to uh, eat meat. Okay, so it's very, very important. Put it like to the side. If it's possible, put it on a different table. Put it on a different table until somebody who is going to eat dairy is going to come or, or, or meet. Continue. Two people on a friendly terms may not eat at, at one table if one is eating meat and one is eating dairy unless they place a noticeable object in between to remind them not to share food. So something like usually not, not, uh, not, is not put on a table. Something is between them, right? So we have uh, um, we had examples of some like placemats, some different uh, tablecloth or no tablecloth. Uh, so uh, he he would uh, uh, would uh, remove the tablecloth and eat it on the table as it is, and she would have a tablecloth. So it would be like a reminder not to eat the food uh, from each other's plate. If he's eating dairy and she's eating meat, let's say, right? Or something like in between, some ways, or uh, like something like usually does not belong to the on the table, 
right? So people would pay, pay attention and uh, remind themselves that something is different, not to take from somebody else's plate. They may also use the separate tablecloth, okay? Okay. Or placemats, okay, we said that, okay, okay. Uh, or they sit, um, sit further that the hand reach from each other. So that's also solution. So one, one is sit on one side of the table, another is another side of the table. So for sure, they're not going to reach into each, other, each other's plate. Okay. Continue. So <clears throat> so one, one more time, the topic was precautionary, precautionary prohibition. So people would not get to eat from uh, each other's plate. When students eat uh, together in a school cafeteria, one eating meat and one dairy, uh, one uh, one of the two should open the bag uh, to use it as a mat. Okay. Alternatively, they um, they may place a noticeable object between them. So I'll put a bag or something like uh, something like uh, that uh, would uh, catch their attention, and uh, they're not going to eat uh, from each other plate. I'm not sure why would people eat from each other plate, especially like uh, in a school cafeteria. I don't know. That's uh, but uh, but in in case people so friendly. Kids are friends, so friendly, right? So they must do something to remind themselves not to eat from each other. Continue. Two strangers may sit uh, and eat uh, together in a park table, even though they eat in meat, uh, one eating meat and one eating dairy. So of course, strangers are not going to take <laughs> to, to get into each other's plate and eat from there. Okay. So so that was the review of what we said last time. Any questions on what we said before we continue? Okay, no problem. So we uh, we start uh, next section, and uh, the, the the question were asked as before, and we did just uh, summary like uh, answer. So now we're going to in details, right? And the topic is eating meat and dairy one after the other. Okay, a eating dairy after the meat. Okay. Hazal decreed that one may not eat dairy even after eating meat without waiting a specific amount of time. Right? Uh, between the two. Okay. This is referred by um, colloquial term being flashing. So, flesh, I, I think it's a Ashkenazic term. It, it's, um, what is it? But uh, many Sephardim also use it. Flesh, flesh, flesh. Uh, uh, it's like, uh, so I'm being inflation, meaning that I, I just ate meat. Like I'm in that time period of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of eating meat for six hours, let's say. Although this rule is cited, um, this rule is cited in Talmud, it is a subject to the difference interpretation and explanation. So, okay. So, and, and we're going to see there are several customs, how long people wait between, um, between, um, um meat and dairy. Okay, so part number one, Talmudic source. The source for this rule is found in a Talmudic passage that uh, relate that Mar Ukwa would wait until the next meal before eating cheese uh, after the meat, uh, meat meal, right? Rishanim disagree as to the meaning of uh, wait, uh, waiting until the next meal. <laughs> so um, let's explain what is... Uh, what is, the, what is the question here? So in olden times, just, uh, just so you know, most people ate only twice a day. So today people eat three times a day, most of the people, right? Snacking uh, every 15 minutes, right? But, uh, but like meals, I would say three, three times a day usually, but uh, sometimes some, some people eat two, twice a day, but uh, in Talmudic time, I think that all of them or most of them ate only twice a day. Okay, so until the next meal, so we need to, like, uh, this is a very broad statement. It, maybe he had a breakfast at 8 a.m. and had dinner at 7, or at 8. Okay, so what does it mean? What does it mean next meal? Okay. Um, the, in the opinion, some Rishonim, it's actually Rambam uh, Raj Barosh, uh, right, on Hulim 8.5, so big ones. Uh, the essential element is waiting the amount of time after eating meat. Waiting amount of time. So amount of time, so it's still not, it's not decided. This span of time is meaning uh, is measure is measured by usual span at the time between the midday and the evening meals. Okay, which in time of Hazal was six hours. 
So that's how they got these six hours. So from the midday, right? So from the midday and until uh, until the evening meal. Okay. So let's see. The, uh, let's see the commentary. So that's how they got to six hours. Um, in the time of Kazal, when clock and watches were not available, time was uh, measured in relation to the time needed for various actions. The time um, needed to, to greet one uh, one another, this uh, right. So uh, actually, we, we spoke about it, right? Our friend Levi asked, asked the, this question: How long the, um, how long time you need uh, and after after you you heard the thunder, right? It's a good question, right? To to say the blessing and uh, that's uh, that's the time. So they they did not have uh, seconds. So right. So they, they would you uh, use this phrase Shalom Aleichem Rabbi. But somebody, so some other people say, no, it's actually Shalom Alechem Rebbe Amori, right? Shalom Alechem Rebbe, my teacher, like, uh, yeah, Rebbe, my, my teacher, right? So it would be, it would add like another half a second to say. So that's why we will say one and a half to two seconds. So to include the both opinions, right? That's how they uh, did the measurement. The time necessary to walk uh, four cubits. Right, that's uh, that's another measurement. So four cubits is approximately like seven, uh, seven seven and a half feet, eight it's uh, seven and a half eight feet, approximately in meters uh, it's uh, approximately two meters less. Right, um, continue. The time that necessary to walk uh, two hundred uh, cubits. So two hundred cubits is a uh, shabbos. So it's a uh, it's a distance that you allow to to walk from uh, from the place. From from the end of, end end of the city, so inside of the city you can walk as much as you as uh, as you want. There is no problem on, on Shabbos, of course, and without caring if, if there is no care. But uh, but uh, outside of the city limit, only two thousand cubits. It's uh, I think uh, it's approximately approximately point six miles. It's uh, and the kilometers. It's I think it around one kilometer. Okay, continue. Silin Mar Ukwa. Um, we do not find this, this use of uh, similar maku maruqa. We do not find this use anywhere else in the Talmud. Uh, express the time span in six hours at the time between the meals. Okay, so it's uh, all of this uh, that, that we mentioned before is a known uh, measurement, but this one is a new one. A scholar such as Maukwa usually ate uh, the, his morning meal in a six hour. In a six hour of the day. Thus, the evening meal was normally six hours later. Okay, so Hagra and others. Okay, so six hours in the day. It's, it 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 means it's a noon time, right? Um, <clears throat> we we going by halachic hours, seasonal hours, and six hours after that, it's uh, his evening meal. Okay, so six. continue. Okay, so that's uh, so first opinion. How we got six hours from um, from this stage, right? So he said, wait uh, six hours uh, from one meal to another. <clears throat> Second opinion. <clears throat> so it's, uh, I'm going to say who said it. That's a fourth Hulin one of five A Hagasas Ashrei Asheri Hulin eight five. Okay. Others contend that essential point is not to eat meat. And daily during the same meal, so that's uh, <laughs> as you see, it's totally opposite. I mean, to like totally different direction. Uh, once the meat uh, is finished, one may eat daily. So it's also to, it's too, too extreme, right? So do not eat in one meal. Uh, one who recites Birchas Hamazon or proper uh, Bracha Achrana for the meal was uh, was not the bread meal, right? So if if you ate the uh, um, Meal bread, I mean bread, uh, right? Meal with, with bread. So he said, "Birchas Hamazon." If you did not eat uh, a meal with bread, as we gave example yesterday, I don't remember what what uh, was the question, but the person ate without bread, salad, and other things. So he he said separate blessings on uh, uh, after he finished, right? On all of these of his uh, meals, right? So, all right. So so he had, uh, he said the bless. He ate the meat. Ate meat. Said the blessing after blessing. Um, 
just one second, one second, one second. So, so one, one more time the whole sentence. One who recites Birchas Hamazon or proper Bracha Hana uh, of the meal was uh, the meal was not with bread, right? Has ended his meal and may eat daily. So according to this opinion, you uh, finish your. Uh, so it's what, what does it mean? Not in the same meal, literally, right? Literally, you finish the meal. You say the after blessing and you can eat daily according to this opinion. However, even according to this opinion, one should wait minimum of an hour, one hour after eating meat. Um, and this requirement is cited by Rema 811. Okay. Uh, and Gra notes that the source is found in Zor, meaning uh, right, it uh, waited one hour. Again, one hour from meat to daily. So don't draw any conclusions, we just go through the opinions. In addition, he must clean his mouth by eating solid food, right? As we always say, uh, even, so we, we said even, <clears throat> even um, between fish and, and meat, right? So we, we said the, the combination of the fish and meat, it some, uh, possesses some danger, spiritual danger, right? So we say it's proper to eat something uh, like chewy some, something hard, like a piece of bread or something, right? Uh, that would clean your mouth and uh, drink some, like even uh, one, uh, um, like even a little bit of some water, wine, whatever you drink, no problem, right? To, to wash, uh, to rinse your mouth or just rinse with water. Okay. So continue. Um, so they, they say, see, well, one hour. So not not right away, but one hour, and we say rinse your mouth. In addition, uh, he must clean his mouth of eating the salad foods, right? So, the salad food. Drinking something, as we said, okay. Uh, according to the first opinion, we should require waiting six hours. No cl cleansing of the mouth is necessary. So if, if we go by one hour, we don't go by one hour, we don't go by second opinion, but if, if, we go by by the first opinion by, by the second opinion we would need to rinse our mouth right because uh, they say uh, wait only one hour and eat something hard and uh, drink something okay uh, to, to to remove the the residue of, uh, of the meat but uh, according to the first opinion after six hours so this um, this uh, taste of the meat and even if you if you have uh, meat stuck between your teeth it's uh, it spoils. It's not it's not exactly meat. I mean, it is considered to be garbage in some sense. So okay, so that's why we, we, we even like you have a meat stuck between your teeth. It's not it's no longer meat. Okay. So uh, so there is one commentary uh, on uh, drink something. Okay. So Rima in the same place. All the modern hygiene uh, that uh, has provided more effective methods of cleaning one mouth, for example, flossing, brushing one's teeth, and um, gargling with the mouthwash, okay? Perhaps they alone do not accomplish the desired effect. Eating solid foods actually wipes uh, the mouth surface and removes any, che uh, any uh, cheese residue, and um, is the only halakhically acceptable method, okay? One who, in addition, brushes his teeth is so certainly praiseworthy. So of course, like uh, to, to to chew the, the, the piece of uh, bread, like uh, a small piece of bread, or to or, or to go and floss and go and uh, and you use the mouthwash. Of course, I mean you, everybody understand it, it, it is uh, maybe even better than uh, this piece of bread, but halakhically, it's not acceptable. It's very simple. Like uh, halakhically, some things we don't we don't go by the modern technology. Right, if some mother technology, some mother invention, we can use as a like additional proof. For example, DNA. Right, DNA we can uh, we can use as additional proof. But uh, it's uh, for example one one example uh, we learn in our uh, medical class. Right, so <clears throat> by DNA they, they can establish whether this uh, the, the, this child uh, is is a son of the, that person. Right, so and uh, let's say they, they took a DNA sample and they found out that this son is not, unfortunately, not uh, this uh, this boy is not son of that uh, that particular person. Right, so and uh, halakhically, can we call him a mamzer? 
right? Uh, illegitimate, uh, illegitimate uh, uh, child? Absolutely not. It's not enough. We need uh, special halachic uh, proofs for that, right? But uh, but we can uh, free that person, this uh, father, who thought that all this life, all his life, that his father from uh, paying child support. Right? but not from f some financial responsibility, but not, uh, but we would not call a boy a mamzer. Okay, it's very interesting. So we, we use DNA or some other um, like modern technologies, but uh, according to Hala, with, with, uh, with, with, Hala, uh, with uh, uh, okay, Halacha comes first, and then as a second proof or second like uh, help uh, of uh, technologies. Okay, science. Continue. Number two, halachic consequences. So first opinion is six hours. Second opinion is one hour. That's a big difference, right? The halachic consequences. The, the almost universally accepted practice is to waste six hours between eating meat and, daily, uh, and eating daily. So period. So that's uh, among, uh, uh, however, Sephardic and Ashkenazic tradition differs in their approach. So let's see. What is the difference? According to Sephardic tradition, the six out uh, respite um, is halakhically required. Okay. It follows that those, um, those opinions that uh, interpreted in, uh, uh, opinions that interpreted the Talmud in the first manner. Okay. Ashkenazic tradition follows the linear opinion, the second opinion cited above in theory. <laughs> Nevertheless, in practice, the six-hour uh, uh, respite was accepted among, um, um, almost universally among Ash Ashkenazic Jews as well. So it's Shulchan, Shulchan Aruch 89.7. So Sephardic uh, followed the first opinion, meaning the, the Shulchan Aruch, like six hours for sure. Ashkenazic, I'm not sure when it was established, like uh, technically this one hour, but practically nobody, I mean... I know only a few people who, who keeps the uh, different hours right? because they have this uh, strong tradition from their ancestors. But otherwise, uh, all Ashkenazim uh, keep uh, six hours as well. Okay. Poskim maintained that uh, this is the proper practice. Uh, just a second. Okay, so let me let me quickly read. So it's uh, from Shah 89.5. It seems that uh, this change of custom took place approximately in 17th century. Okay, since Rima lived in uh, from 15, uh, 1530 to 1572, very short life. Very short life, right? Um, had an old custom of waiting one hour. While Shah uh, that lived uh, in 17th century, 1622 to 1663, also very short life, wow, uh, right, uh, for 40 years, so for 41 years, uh, supports the custom waiting six hours. So uh, in uh, in 16th century, Rima, uh, who commented on Shulchan Aruch, and uh, that's how we pass him by, in, as, as, we, as it looks like in most of the cases, but not all of the cases, he said uh, one hour, when we wait one hour, and Shah, in the 17th century, he said, no, we, we're going to wait seven hours, six hours. Continue. However, certain uh, communities continue to follow original Ashkenazi custom of reciting bracha achrana, waiting only one hour and, uh, and uh, cleaning the mouth. Okay, we, we're going to see which one. This custom is found today among the Dutch Jews. And I met uh, one Dutch Jew. Interesting. Um... Dutch Jews. So let's uh, see the commentary. Many observant, many observant Dutch Jews are actually descendants of Polish Jews who immigrated uh, to Holland in the first half of the 20th century. Very interesting. There, um, there may be a basis for them to follow a lenient Dutch custom if they live among the observant Dutch Jews. Okay. Nevertheless, uh, when they live in, in live in Netherlands. And, uh, and live among the Jews who wait six hours, so I think the neighboring country, they're required uh, by the same logic, keep the custom of six hours. 
Okay, so basically, keep if if you move uh, to to different place, so it's proper to keep uh, their custom. But I'm not sure based on this information how these Polish Jews uh, who keep uh, who kept uh, six hours they uh, move and lived among the Dutch Jews. Uh, I'm not sure how many religious Dutch Jews there were there. Maybe okay. Bezrat Hashem. Okay, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> right, and uh, so they switched to one hour. I'm not sure. Very interesting. Okay. Many Jews originated from Germany. That's also very uh, famous. Uh, found the tradition waiting three hours after eating meat. Okay. So, um, one more time. Original tr tradition is six hours. So, they go by, by, by the first opinion in the Talmud. I think that's what Shulchan Aruch... Yes, that's what Shulchan Aruch in... Uh, 1897 uh, Paskins by, right? Um, right, right, right. Uh, then uh, one hour, uh, original as uh, as a second opinion as Rima Paskin, right? And uh, so that Jews and German Jews, uh, three hours. Okay. Three hours. Okay. Twenty-nine. So commentary. Abena Yerucham. Uh, sites, uh, sites as a possible source for this custom, meaning three hours. I mean, one, one we saw in Gemara, six we understand. What is three hours? I, I, my, my opinion is it's in between, right? Uh, sites the possible source for this custom. However, it is difficult to find logical base for three hours uh, respite. <laughs> Perhaps the custom is based upon the theory that during the short winter day, mm, in northern Germany, the span between meals was sh uh, shortened, corresponding to the length of the day. Very interesting. Right, so, okay. Um, in this, uh, if this is correct, perhaps the shorter waiting span uh, is sufficient at any time of the year. So, meaning is a winter is a, the shorter day, so maybe uh, they can apply it uh, in summer as well. Since it is illogical, that the waiting time should uh, change from season to season. Okay, makes sense. It seems that uh, those who wait three hours treat it as equally as uh, waiting for six hours. Okay. Thus, uh, they do not uh, require eating and drinking to clean their mouth after waiting three hours. So for, for them, three hours is like six hours, meaning after uh, three hours, uh, they can just eat without cleansing uh, their mouth. Very interesting. So again, three customs, but majority of the people, as I said, I, I, it's not like I know many, many people, but uh, I know only a few German Jews and they do keep uh, three hours. Okay. And uh, one Dutch, but I never asked him. It was in Israel. Very interesting. Um, so, but um, actually these Dutch, they, they came from, uh, from Deutschland, but uh, they actually... Um, they emigrated there during, during the war, or right, right before the war. I'm not sure, like, uh, I mean, he, this guy was born there, of course, he grew up there, but uh, but uh, they were not originally from uh, from Deutschland. Okay, so number three. Okay, changing one's custom. That's uh, also a very commonly asked question. The linear custom mentioned above are accept acceptable, for one whose family tradition is such, period, right? And period, same count. However, other may not choose to follow this custom. So it's very interesting. So okay, if if somebody knows, like uh, uh, one one person that I learn with every day, Baruch Hashem, for many years, so he knows. Um, so he's a descendant, one of the descendant from uh, from uh, Hassam Sofer. So I'm not sure. It's uh, seven generations. I think, or eight generations, and, and, and he knows his, uh, his lineage even, even before that. You understand? So if, if he said, so he, he has a very strong tradition, so he knew exactly his father was a Ruch Hashem, very religious Holocaust survivor, so he knows exactly what their tradition is. But uh, for other people, like most of the people do not know their tradition. So they cannot pick and choose just uh, uh, like, uh, especially in this, uh, in this area. So since majority of people keep six hours, so somebody who knew New Balchu or Kamer, they must keep six hours. It's not uh, it's not even a question. 
Okay, but uh, people who have a strong roots and they know tradition, okay, they can continue keeping because, uh, as we said before in one of the classes, it's not proper to change your custom. Absolutely not. Okay, continue. The acceptable tradition among the overwhelming majority of the Jews to wait six hours uh, is binding upon everyone, exactly as we said. So, be it Ashkenazic or Sephardic, it doesn't matter. Unless this tradition is clearly uh, is clearly otherwise, as we explained, one who changes his custom to follow more lenient custom is soundly uh, censured by halachic authorities. So our halachic authorities did not like this uh, when when person is trying to do that, even though it is a Jewish custom, it is an accepted Jewish custom, but it's not your Jewish custom. Okay. So who is the, who are those authorities who are not happy with this person? It's Chachma Saddam in Aru Hashulham. So don't, uh, don't, uh, don't go against this uh, big Chachamim. Nevertheless, when a woman marries a man who followed the custom of waiting only three hours, she may change her custom and wait only three hours. So that's uh, in uh, Sigras Maishu and uh, others. Okay. That's that's a different story. So when when woman uh, marries man, she must accept his custom. So on in a few times, in a few times that I know, a person, a few people, they change uh, Ashkenazi guy and married Sephardic woman, and somehow somehow they they decided to go Sephardic. Uh, I mean, at least their children. It's not it's not proper. It must follow the father. Okay. So, but, but for for women there, there there is no no problem, and he does she does not have to do hadaras netarim because uh, it's like uh, it was expected of her. So she the meaning what when she would uh, keep the uh, custom of her father's house, it was expected. So she's going to keep only up to this point up when she get, gets married. So if she, if she marries, uh, for example, she, she's Sephardi, she, she marries Ashkenazi, she would change her custom, or she was. Uh, uh, Ashkenazi, she married a Sephardic person, she changes her husband. There is no problem. So it was uh, never a nether. Okay. So, okay, so she can uh, change her custom in a lenient way, from six hours to three hours. Not a lenient, I apologize. It's not lenient, it's their custom, period. Okay. Uh, she's not required to annul his, her, uh, uh, annul her uh, assumed vows of the six hours. Okay, as we explained. Okay. Conversely, if a woman has a custom waiting three hours and marries the one who waited six hours, she is required to change her custom and wait six hours, unless her husband permits her to follow her family custom. Okay. So it's very interesting. There is a, so it's actually from uh, Hilcha Shlomo. Okay, cited Rav Shlomo Arba Zatza. Um, so it's some kind of leniency. So if husband allows her to keep her has, uh, her custom waiting three hours, so she may uh, keep this custom. But in my mind, it's it's my, my personal opinion. She might get confused. The children what to do. You understand? So that's uh, that's my personal opinion. Okay, but but it's clear if if he would uh, allow her, there is no problem. Okay, so she can keep her old customs. Uh, any questions before we continue? So we'll finish this section, actually. Uh, yes. Um, uh, um, so what happens if, let's say, someone uh, is kind of, I don't know, sick, or after a long period of fasting, uh, he eats meat and then he pukes? Uh, that, does he have to wait... Uh, six hours anyway to, to eat daily afterwards i think so so the the, the, um, the idea is that this meat is still in in his mouth it's not like we don't go by by the stomach where that oh, that, that may be still in, in in the stomach so it says one sec, let me change it says that you're not allowed to eat Okay, so so when, when it says you're not allowed to eat, so eating meaning the, the process of eating meaning it's in your mouth. That's uh, that's the process of eating. You understand? So it's uh, okay. Uh, but uh, uh, we we had this uh, we had this uh, scenario, 
and uh, the the question was if, if a person would say blessing afterwards right so he he had uh, uh, he had a meal and then everything went back or most of them went, went back right uh, so the question if uh, is if he's allowed if he should say the um, the what is it the, the blessing afterwards and we said no he does not say the blessing because uh, like he did not benefit from benefit from from the meal. Okay. Any other questions before we continue? It was a good question. Okay. So we continue then. Practical summary. The prohibition of eating dairy after a meal is based upon Talmudic sources. Okay. Torah is almost a universally accepted tradition is to wait six hours between the meat and dairy. So only, right? So in um, next one, that Jews have a custom of eating dairy after reciting Bracha Achrana, waiting only one hour uh, and uh, cleaning uh, the mouth, German Jews have a custom waiting three hours uh, instead of six. Okay, but these uh, three considered to be like six. One whose tradition is to wait six hours may not choose to change his custom more lenient one. So this custom stays. Okay. Uh, waiting, uh, can you upgrade to, to make it... Uh, um, more stricter, I, I feel. I assume that there, is, there should not be any problem. Okay. But not uh, like not in everybody's face. So, for example, if uh, he, he's a German Jew, as, um, right? So, if everybody keeps the three hours, so don't don't put in like be in everybody's face. As uh, as we said before, like uh, you you want to go take uh, some uh, stringencies up on yourself, so you can take, but not uh, don't don't let everybody know about it. Just keep it private. Continue. When a woman marries, she may change her custom uh, to that of her husband. As we said, but uh, if he would allow her, Rosh Shlomo Zalman Auerbach said that there is no problem, so she can keep her old custom. Okay. So continue section four. Extenuating circumstances. Oh. Since waiting six hours after eating meat is for Ashkenazic Jews a matter of a custom, Rather than halacha, again, halacha is in Shulchan Aruch. Halacha is one hour, but people accept it upon themselves. Uh, and commentary was very interesting. So it says, uh, uh, Sephardic Jews should determine the custom of their uh, their community. Okay. All right, so... I never heard that uh, Ashkenazi uh, Sephardic Jew have a different custom from six hours. I mean, I I, I heard that uh, like, but it was not like from somebody told me, but uh, I never heard it in writing or from any Sephardic Jew. Okay, so but but for Ashkenazi it's one hour is halacha, but uh, six hours is a custom. But custom is uh, it's like a halacha. Right, halacha in certain cases. Um, so in, in cases of the difficulty. One need not wait six hours, for example, a illness, right? So people sick. Normally pro prohibited foods may be eaten only in cases of life-threatening illness, right? So as we said before, you say blessing, you don't say blessing, right? Uh, on this um, prohibited food, okay? However, the requirement of waiting six hours is put aside in case of medical necessity, okay? So... Uh, there, uh, okay, so in case of medical necessity, so I'm not sure what is necessity. Maybe some some food, uh, some like pills must be taken with uh, with milk, right? Uh, I'm I'm not sure in in what uh, circumstances. Maybe maybe like not to upset stomach or something. So they it's it's clearly says says on on a, on a, on a, on a prescription take it with milk. Okay. So let's see, commentary. The Chachmas Adam, 10, uh, 40, 13, and Aruch HaShulcha, 89.7. Ashkenazic Jews may certainly be lenient regarding waiting six hours, since for them it is a matter of custom rather than halacha. It may be um, disregarded in case of difficulty. However, even Sephardic Jews, who consider the six hours uh, respite is a halakhic uh, requirement, may be lenient in case of illness. Uh, see, um, Yehaved Da'as, 358. Okay, so for, it's much more lenient for uh, for uh, Ashkenazic Jews, 
but in case of again illness is ne necessary. Yeah, but even uh, Sifari juice in like um, in case of necessity. Okay, it can necessity mean it, it illness. Okay, so let's see. Therefore, a uh, one suffering from uh, ailment that requires him to eat daily food frequently, uh, for example, an ulcer. Okay, need wait only one hour after eating meat. Okay. Very interesting. Uh, and uh, clean his mouth by eating solid foods and uh, and drinking. So, I, I, like, according to, uh, in in case of this necessity, in, oh, that's terrible diseases also. Right? Uh, so, poor, poor person. So, he needs to eat uh, the daily drink meal. Right? Um, so, wait one hour. And as we said, uh, eat something hard and uh, drink something. Okay, so let's see. There is a comment here. See, Chachmas, sorry, Chachmas Adam, right uh, in the same place. He also required one to manually clean his uh, the teeth by flossing or brushing, apparently uh, the, to compensate for the waiting the normally required for six hours. It is unclear whether the requirement rings in one uh, the mouth well. Okay. Other authorities, however, do not mention the requirements of manual cleaning the, the teeth. So it's not teeth, but even like uh, actually between the teeth, the, the meat that's stuck. Okay, but, okay, so Chachamah Saddam said clean, so that's a proper way to do. Okay, even, so they, they gave you permission uh, in case of necessity, so you follow a stricter approach and uh, clean between the teeth. Uh, okay, B. A second situation, nursing woman, nursing mother who needs to drink milk often has a status similar to that of one who is ill and she is governed by the same rules. Very interesting, right? So she can actually wait one hour because she, she needs a lot of milk for the baby. Commentary. See Salman Chaim, uh, uh, 286, uh, no annulment of the vow, is required since she plans to eventually return to her original custom. So that's uh, that's the explanation. M most uh, later Paskim followed uh, the, his view. Uh, okay. Okay. So since she's in this situation, so it's uh, for uh, for the health of the baby. So we, we allow her uh, to wait only one hour between uh, meat and milk. Right, but and uh, she does not have to do hataras nidarim. Why? Because it's not a normal. She she's not stopping. It's only temporary measure. Okay. So next one, C, uh, baby or child. The rules of waiting six hours vary according to the child's age. So first situation, infant. Okay, a child three year old uh, or younger need not wait six hours. That's okay. Right. Uh, first of all, until bar mitzvah, they're not obligated to keep mitzvahs. Okay. Of course, we try to train them as, uh, as soon as the, they start uh, to having some understanding. But uh, that's not what we do, right? But we, we don't uh, push on them. A child of this age is too young to have uh, his milk drinking, uh, milk drinking uh, restricted. Okay. So right. That's clear. So uh, they they drink a, a lot of milk. Um, continue. One may even uh, feed him daily immediately after meat, if this is the beneficial for a child. Okay. So of course uh, the, you, you have to wash their hands if they were eating with, with the hands and stuff like that. So not to not to get the residue on uh, on the different utensil on a, on a plate on a cup on a fork. So that so that uh, has to be taken into consideration. So commentary said this is uh, the common pra uh, custom. So if they want to eat uh, daily right after meat, no problem. Don't don't protest. Don't it's a little baby, right? So uh, again, it's uh, uh, under three years old. This is common custom. See response of Rav Moshe Storm, uh, appended to the Hebrew edition. Okay, who knows that any meat residue should be wiped from the child's mouth? Okay, so of course you you you, you wipe their hands if they were eating with their hands. You go wash their hands, of course, and uh, wipe the mouth and let them uh, drink milk. Uh, next um, next situation is young child. 
A child older than uh, older than approximately three years old is stronger and should wait an hour. So okay, so we go a linear opinion. We we're going to use uh, from three three years old and on, if possible before if possible before eating daily. Uh, in addition, a child must be slowly trained to um, in proper absorbance of the mitzvah. So after three years old, uh, one should uh, train child according to his ability to wait by increasing the wait uh, uh, the wait time each year. So as as soon as you see the child develop. He or she can wait longer, so let them wait uh, longer. Okay, a second, check in time. Okay, we have time. So, <clears throat> so next one is older child. In the opinion of Sampo's king, uh, response of Rav Moshe Stone, uh, a child older than approximately six should preferably wait six hours after eating meat. So six is uh, is a child in the age uh, of Chinuch, right? When he's uh, ready to be trained for performance of the mitzvahs. Nevertheless, if the child requires milk, uh, a thirst for milk, or insists upon eating dairy products, he may do so if he is uh, younger than nine. So he's another gradation, right? Uh, okay. Uh, for nine for a robust child or 10 years, for a more slight child, so it, it depends on the child constitution. Okay, so so up to nine, if if he if, if he needs to to drink milk, right, or, or ten if he is more stronger. Okay, uh, uh, nine if he more more stronger and ten if he more like uh, slight. Okay, so commentary. See the sponsor Helka Kriyakov for discussion of various issues involved. On one hand, the minor or even an infant may not be fed non-kosher foods, right? Never. So, so many, many times in the in Torah said, don't do, don't do, I'm Hashem, I think, right? So in Russia, on the, on the page, explain why. So, I mean, of course, he, he already said that you cannot eat. So what was the I'm Hashem means that you're not allowed to give to, to children. Okay. On the other hand, dairy after meat is essentially not a threat. Trade, right? So non-kosher food is, is one thing that we're not allowed to feed them non-kosher food, even though they themselves allowed to eat. I mean, uh, it's not that. I apologize. Taking back. So we're not uh, obligated to protest if they do something wrong in this in this sense, right? But uh, we're not allowed to to help them to, to do any awareness, right? So it's a big difference between non-kosher meat and uh, meat and dairy. Okay. So continue. Other poskim ruled that uh, six years old need, uh, needed to wait only three hours. Okay. A nine or ten years old child should wait six hours uh, before um, uh, hours, even though he's not yet bar mitzvah. So, but he, he's not yet bar mitzvah, but he's uh, like uh, uh, like uh, old enough. However, an unusually frail child. So that is possible, right? Very sickly child. That's for sure. Uh, who requires milk may drink milk after waiting only an hour, reciting bracha achrana and cleaning his mouth. Okay, so as we explained before, so if he is very very sickly, right, uh, very very fragile, so let him do that. Okay, so waiting time so for children, uh, they created some kind of table. So one more time, from three to six, one hour if possible. Uh, from uh, younger than three, no waiting. Uh, from three to six, one hour if possible. Six to nine or ten, three hours slash six hours. So it's proper six. If they cannot handle, let them do three. Nine to ten uh, or older. So we require them to, to to keep six hours. Okay. So next one D. Next situation, like also exception, feeding tube. One who is being fed through the NASA gastric tube. A plastic tube and send it uh, through the nose into the stomach or gast uh, gastronomy feeding directly into the stomach through the tube uh, surgically um, introduced through the abdominal wall does not have to wait between the meat and dairy I mean it's uh, of course it's in a li liquid form but it's in uh, yeah it's meat and dairy indeed uh, he may be fed meat and dairy mixed together provided they are not cooked together 
So I, I, I assume that they're cold and uh, okay, but uh, even mixed together. I'm, I'm not sure how it works, but uh, they, but they know. Okay. So meaning, meaning that when you you don't feel the the taste, right? So not you I don't mean anybody a person does not uh, taste because it goes through the tubes through through his nose or through the stomach so it's like terrible terrible life okay um, the prohibition of eating basar vihalab is limited to any form of eating through the throat so as we said before that's a halakhic definition of eating through the throat uh, in in these forms of feeding, the food does not pass through the throat. I mean, in a, in a tube, but it does not count that it's through the throat. Um, so there is one commentary. Let's see, Sicily Azer, uh, uh, If the meat and dairy were cooked together, there would be prohibition deriving benefit from basar halal. Okay, so even though like uh, when feeding through the tube is not considered to be eaten, one of the three prohibitions, but uh, another prohibition is uh, you're not allowed to derive benefits. So if they were cooked together, the problem is deriving benefit. However, one may derive benefit from meat and dairy that are only mixed together. See Rema 87.1. So again, in these limited circumstances. Our next exception, uh, E. Uh, one does not recite uh, bracha over milk during the six hour interval. I'm sorry, one, I'm sorry, one who, one who recites bracha over the milk during the six hour interval. So I guess by mi mistake, right? One who is in error, exactly, recites bracha rishana over the milk may, in some opinion, or, or, or in opinion of many paskim, partake a bit of milk so not to cause the bracha levatala, right? Um, bracha recited in way, provided that one hour has passed. So it's like an exception. So bracha levatala is a, is a biblical, right? And uh, waiting the more than one hour is uh, according to our halacha is uh, it's, it's, on, uh, it's only tradition. So they would allow not, not to transgress the biblical to them take a small seat. Commentary. So, but uh, again, if only one hour passed. If an hour has passed, it seems certain, certain that one should sip a bit of milk. Perhaps even one hour is not has passed, it nevertheless permitted to sip some milk. Response of uh, Yav uh, Yahweh does. Okay. So I'm not sure if it's uh, proper, like uh, if, you, if you have something else, l l Let's say we have something else uh, on a, on a table before in front of you. So like, it's better to take something else after you said the blessing. Okay. But if the, you, you have nothing else, so you can uh, take a small sip. Um, I'm not sure they, they do not say here, so I'm afraid to say. But I would say maybe I, I would uh, spit it out. Maybe I would not uh, swallow. So just taste it and sp spit it out. Continue. <clears throat> F. The last one. One who ate dairy in error. One who in error ate uh, even a large uh, amount of dairy before the end of the six hours period has not changed his status and must wait the remainder of the six hours period before eating any additional dairy food. That's very interesting. <laughs> There is no basis uh, for the common misconception that once uh, once it's daily, he's no longer af um, affected by the meat uh, meal. Okay, so let's let's understand this. Okay, so we we're obligated, as we said, uh, to wait six hours. So a person by mistake he miscalculated, right? Uh, and he started eating after five hours, let's say. So he ate and then realized that uh, six hours did, did not pass. So he stopped, he stopped, right? But he's not, uh, he's not allowed to continue eating whatever his meal, let's say he stopped in the, in the, in the middle, only uh, after six hours elapsed from eating meat. Okay, so uh, one does not cancel out the other. So commentary say, thus uh, um, with touch, uh, touch of humor, one of the one who had Parmesan cheese within six hours of eating meat will be both uh, uh, mil uh, milhik and flashing. Okay, so so it's a very interesting thing. So he said, so somebody 
who ate Parmesan cheese. And Parmesan cheese, that's just to remind us, it's a hard cheese. Uh, and after, after this cheese, we have to wait six hours. Right? We didn't get to it, but we go into it. So the humor here is uh, there are two, two expressions. Flashing, meaning I'm in this six hour um, uh, period. And milchik, meaning that I'm in uh, this six hour period uh, waiting from cheese from the cheese in order to eat uh, in order to eat uh, meat very interesting so in this case he's uh, in both statuses inflation and uh, you know, of course it's a joke but uh, but uh, all right we can stop here we got to the uh, practical summary you have any questions on any topic yes related to this topic um so the first one is um some time ago some a few days ago robbie ruben Schlita told the story about uh about Hor yeshiba that was having some trouble with studying torah he could not focus properly mm -hmm. and he didn't know why so he went to rob hypanievsky to ask him what was going on and uh rob Kanievsky told him that it was because he uh was not careful with uh, mixing milk and meat and that he had to do chuba for it so my question is uh considering this has like a negative effect uh even some time afterwards after doing it uh accidentally what's the proper uh, way of doing chuba for it mm -hmm. so um, okay so it's very very good question so it's uh just just to explain what is a what is the problem of course it's uh, the problem is spiritual so there are two two problems that uh that uh, one, one that the, the biggest problem he that he went against the law, so it's a sin. So when somebody transgresses the law, it's a sin, and uh, the sins uh, they actually affect uh, a person neshama. So like uh, after like after building up the sins, the more the more like even the small one, even uh, for example, somebody does not uh, does not wash uh, his or her hands after after the meal. You understand the, my my machanim. So it builds up, builds up, and uh, as we learn in Mihtar um, Meliyahu, right? Uh, so it says it's like a klipa, so all, all the sins, and and uh, soul it like uh, loses its uh, sensitivity. You understand? So he cannot concentrate on the Torah because the, the soul is not pure. In order to pe penetrate in, into like a holy Torah, into the, into the soul, it has to break all of the klipa, right? And uh, it has to break hard. And uh, that's why a person has to do Teshua, to melt it, right? That to melt this clip of these uh, impurities on, on his soul. How do you do Teshua? You, first of all, you stop. So first of all, you acknowledge that I did something wrong. That's first one. Then you stop completely I'm not, and, and decided not to do it again, uh, right? And next step is uh, you, you put yourself like some kind of borders, like uh, in order not to make this, uh, this mistake. For example, in my family custom is what we do, I mean, it's, it's only my family custom. People can do whatever they want, right? Uh, so we eat daily only, only in the morning. That's it. So one, one time a day, we eat daily. Well, we, I mean, it's not necessary, but if we eat daily, it would be in the morning. So a next uh, meal or snack is, is never going to be daily. That's it. So you, you cannot go wrong with that, uh, with that approach. So, but every, every person, according to his uh, hab, habits and needs, as, as we said, there is some medical needs for some people. They must uh, drink a lot of milk and eat a lot of dairy because of the stomach, right? Not, not because of uh, whatever they want to do, right? Um, so, but it's proper to build some fences, so not, not to transgress. That's it. So stop, feel bad. And, uh, and of course, uh, I remind yourself uh, during the Yom Kippur, that's uh, because it's a negative commandment. So it, it can, can be erased only on Yom Kippur. Positive would be... Um, right, so positive would, would be for, forbidden, or for, forgiven right away, right? But for, for negatives, you need, uh, even for, for rabbinic ones, I think you have to wait until Yom Kippur. That's it. And uh, it's uh, one of the easy ones to get rid of, but a uh, person have to be like, uh, acknowledge that uh, he did something wrong and uh, the, you see this uh, the, 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 uh, the merit of this person the way I see it, that he acknowledged the issue and he came to the right person to ask and he accepted the rebuke right and uh, he changed he decided to change his way that's a big step 
many people just ask questions and I am I feel so sick inside and they continue their way before before they ask the question. So why did you ask? Right. Okay. Okay, next question please. Oh you said you have two two questions. Yeah, second question. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Uh so my second one is um related to pets. I heard that it's it's not good to feed them like milk and meat because it's kinda of dangerous for them too. I don't know if that's like No, um, there there is a, there is no problem. There is no problem. I mean uh, uh, meat and milk is uh, would be forbidden to uh, to to feed to to your pets. Why? Because one of the three prohibitions that we have in the meat and milk combination is deriving benefit. But we are allowed to derive benefit from rabbinically forbidden uh, um, mixtures. Right? So what, what is it? Rabbinically for, forbidden, like uh, we said, chicken and uh, and milk. So it, it's only rabbinically forbidden. Or the wild animals and um, milk of domestic animals. So, but mixture milk and milk, we, we don't know, we don't feed them. Especially it was cooked together. So, um, I have a question. So, on the, I think I sent the rabbi maybe two weeks ago, a week ago, I'm not sure. It was one of everyone's, uh, one of his children. And uh, he said that there was a cap list of sorts that said that you're allowed to even drink half spam. Like actual milk, how is that in America? Is that recommended? If possible, should be avoided. How is that? Okay, so okay. so the the question is uh, is a uh, uh, we did not get in this book, but it's for, for sure in this book. Uh, a, a prohibition of um, of um, of the milk that is was um, produced by non Jew, right? That's uh, that's the question. So it's very famous question. Very famous question, and uh, uh, our our sages dealt with that. It, so in olden days, in olden days. So let let me explain you where where the issue came from. Before before having all the refrigerators, so it was uh, very hard to preserve milk. So right, uh, it was very hard to preserve milk. So what people would do, uh, they would uh, um, milk other animals, like for example, horse. And horse has a very like uh, fatty milk, like very fatty. And they would uh, add this uh, horse milk into the cow milk. And uh, in olden days, because before people knew about cholesterol, so the fatter the food is, the the, the richer it is, the, the better it is. You understand? And it would was go good for um, preservation. So of course, for us, it's uh, not allowed to eat uh, to drink this uh, this uh, horse milk. So uh, the only milk we allow to, to drink is only when it was milked, the cow was milked, uh, let's say cow milk for, for simplicity, right? Uh, from, um, by, by a Jew, or it was supervised by a Jew. So in supervised of uh, a Jew, we're going to learn this book. I'm going to just give summary. So if, uh, if this non-Jew would be afraid that the Jew can come at any moment, even if he's not in, in a room, right? So he would not mix uh, not kosher milk into this uh, cow milk. Right, but today, uh, Moshe Feinstein dealt with that. So he said today we, they have cameras and they have inspections, uh, government inspection, go to this uh, milk uh, farms and they check and if, the, if there's some impropriety, because it's a milk, milk and bread is uh, like a staple food in all of the countries, right? So that's, uh, they have special subsidy, they uh, government control uh, uh, the prices. On the milk, right? They subsidize and stuff like that, right? So they 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 would go and inspect. So if they found some impropriety, they would shut down the whole farm business. They take the license. So it does not make sense for these uh, farmers. Like uh, they, they they put so much preservatives in that milk, right? Uh, the, the milk can uh, stay like uh, like for three weeks, like regular milk, three weeks. So I mean, if if somebody knows like real milk, like uh, from cow, that's what uh, when I was little, that's what we buy, like from from cow fresh milk like after two days then even sometimes next days and unless you pasteurize and it boil it goes bad like two days for sure it goes bad you understand so if, if you buy milk that can uh, stay for three weeks in the refrigerator sometimes even more like you you can imagine how many preservatives and chemicals they were added so they, they don't need to mix all this cow milk on this milk actually opposite issue today especially today Right, they actually remove all of the fat and uh, the skim milk, or like one percent milk, two percent milk, costs even more than a regular one. Right, so it's very interesting. So they, they would not do all of these things. 
most likely. So uh, Moshe Feinstein, that's all said. So if it's hard for a person to get uh, um, Kalaf Israel, meaning uh, milk that was produced by, 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 by Jew or supervised by Jew, mo most people are not in farming business, right? Um, so was so supervised by, by Jew. So the, yeah, uh, so if, if you can get Kalaf Israel, for sure get it. If, if you cannot, so you can uh, um, uh, you can rely on uh, on OU, so OU Orthodox Union, meaning that they have their supervision and they say this milk is kosher. So after the fact, you can uh, I mean it's not a, you you can drink this milk, and you you can milk uh, uh, eat OU dairy, OU D things whatever whatever needs uh, whatever you need. So some people, uh, for example, Chabadniks, they go like like for them. This, uh, this, uh, this, what is it? Uh, Halaf Stam, as our friend asked, uh, Halaf Stam, for them, it's like, uh, I don't know, like, like blood from the pig. That, that's how they look, blood from the pig. But other things which are much bigger issues, for them, it's nothing. So don't, don't go crazy if it's available, for sure. It's put proper to, to assume the stringency if, if you can. The difference uh, is, I don't know, maybe 30% more you pay for, for this. Uh, Halaf Israel, like maybe I don't know, maybe even more. I don't know, right? Um, right, but uh, but otherwise, not obligated. If it's kosher stem, you can drink uh, milk like that. So it's not it's not going to affect your soul, for sure. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Robert. Oh. Say, say it again. Okay, okay, all right. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, so, okay, don't go crazy against that Chabadnik push it like, uh, again, they uh, very strict on some things and um, very lenient on more more important things than this milk. Okay, so, any other question? Okay, so no question, no problem. So, I just want to add, okay, so yeah, somebody go ahead, go ahead, please. No, you, you, you're just on mute. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, so I remember a few weeks ago you talked about liver, I think. And I just saw... Uh, I, I apologize. Oh, I, 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 I miss... I miss a, I, we were talking about what? Liver? Like liver, food. liver, liver. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. And so there was a recent, like, call how you meet article where they're discussing it and saying you can eat it if it's been grilled or something. I was wondering if you could kind of explain what's, what's the uh, alcohol with that. I apologize. I, it, it's, it's some kind of like a um, noise on the background. Could, could you please repeat your question? I didn't get it. I I get about the, the, the liver, but the second part, I didn't get it. So it, it's allowed to be eaten after it's been grilled? Liver? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. I apologize. Yes, absolutely. But uh, the thing is uh, that you, you, you need to clean it very well. Why? Because uh, this uh, liver, right, all of the blood flows from, from the liver. It's like a filter, right? You have a filter in your, uh, in your car, right? <laughs> uh, accumulates all of the dirt or whatever filter you have, water filter. So uh, same as liver is like all of the, all the blood is uh, like uh, filtered through the liver. Right? So it's a lot of blood, a lot of impurity from the blood. Right, so, but, but if you have this grill and uh, you, you do it all over the grill, you turn and it, it's going to drip down um, on the bottom of the grill. So I, I would su suggest put some, some kind of tray and put like uh, this uh, alu aluminum foil, maybe two or three layers. So that then uh, you, you, you just uh, like uh, throw, the, throw this um, aluminum foil with a lot of blood in there to, to the garbage, not to, not to make uh, the whole grill uh, not kosher. You understand? Because if blood is going to splatter around, that's that's the issue. Right? You would need to kosher the grill. But uh, of course, it's possible. Yeah, you can. Uh, right? that, that that's the only way to, to remove blood. Of course, there are there are big like arteries, right? So that, that you have to cut with knife. So what, what I saw in uh, in uh, in uh, butcher store that I go, so many arteries was actually cut out, but but. He, since he he sells the whole liver, so they, they would uh, like uh, cut only like uh, the, uh, the the piece that en ent enters the liver. So you would have to open and cut like completely this artery out. 
Yes, but uh, if you want to do it, it's uh, up to you. But uh, in in many stores, they they, they, they they sell the chicken liver prepared. It's so, so much money for me. It's a waste of time. And it just so, so you know, just to remind, remind us, it's a kosher, but it's not healthy. It's a lot of cholesterol. So, okay, so just... Uh, just a side note, not everything that, that is kosher is uh, recommended to eat, right, so, as everything, so, okay, go ahead, any other questions? Anybody? Okay, no problem, so to uh, next week we're going to switch to 9.30, so we're going to send reminders, but uh, 9.30 for a month or two months, and then we're going to go to different time, I apologize. I have to move before, 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 because, uh, before, before, because of the uh, day schedule. That's that's it. All right. Thank you very much. And then we go to 7.30 to our regular time. And uh, hopefully our other uh, guys and uh, girls that uh, are watching Rabbi Rubenschlitter right at 9. So we, they, they can watch us, be with us for one hour and uh, go and uh, join Rabbi Rubenschlitter. No problem. So thank you very much. Good night. It was a very successful week. Thank you very much for learning with us. And uh, until the next week, good Shabbos. Thank you. Thank you very much.